Hey guys, so I just got back from seeing Knock at the Cabin. So M. Night Shyamalan feels a lot like Stephen King. With Stephen King book to movie adaptations, you know it's either going to be really good or really bad. And with M. Night, I feel like Shyamalan movies are the same. They're either very hit or very miss, which a lot of people say. So he's done some amazing movies. We've got Split, The Visit, Signs, The Sixth Sense. He's also done some pretty bad movies, but look, every movie that I've ever seen of Shyamalan's has always, always had a twist ending, a big reveal. So I'm not saying that every single one of his movies does that because I haven't seen every single one of his movies, but I've seen enough of them to notice there's definitely a pattern. You go into a Shyamalan movie expecting to see a twist. And this was no exception. So the big twist was, wait for it, wait for it, there is no twist. <laughs> you serious? That was the twist. There is no twist. What you see in the trailers with this movie is basically the whole movie. They showed everything, all the, the tidal wave, the plane crashes. Okay, those were pretty visually impressive, I will admit. That's one of the things that I did enjoy about this movie, plus the setting in the wilderness. Look, I'm just a huge sucker for anything with a tidal wave in it. So I did enjoy that. But I wish they would have held something back in the trailers so that we would have had a bit more of a experience in the movie when you don't know what you're going to get every step of the way. So look, this movie, I feel like we all know what it's about by now. There's a family that goes into the woods, which is a refreshing change from college kids going into the woods and getting killed. So this family goes into the wood the wood, the woods, and they have to make a decision whether or not they want to sacrifice one of themselves to save the world. So look, the acting in this was good all around. I can't fault the acting. Dave Bewista, I think I'm saying that right. I apologize if I'm not. He gave an especially good performance, but his character. So his character had to convince these people to sacrifice one of them to save the world and he just really did a horrible job. He basically just walks in and says one of you need to sacrifice yourselves. Like he wasn't really giving any proof. Obviously they eventually do believe him but still it feels like come on if the world is at stake here you want to maybe work up a bit of a sales pitch you know don't ever become a used car salesman. So apparently it's based on a book. I haven't read it. If you have, let me know down below is the ending different in the book. So it feels like the dialogue was a bit awkward, especially for Dave Bewister's character. But I don't know if they were making it that way on purpose, but it just felt a little cringy at times. So basically these four intruders finally break into the cabin. Well, I say finally, it took them like one minute. Anyway, so they get into the cabin and they give them four chances to save the world. They ask them, will you sacrifice yourself four times? And each time that they say no, some sort of disaster happens. There's a plague, the planes crash, there's a tidal wave. So basically what we see in the trailers. And then on the fourth time, they do start to believe, but they still aren't ready to say, yes, I will sacrifice somebody at that point. So when they say no, the little group have to kill one of themselves. So basically Dave Bewister's character is the last man standing. And at that point, they do start to believe but they still don't want to sacrifice themselves, which is understandable, but still, like, the way that they said it, like, one of the dads that didn't want to sacrifice himself and the other did, 
And the one that didn't basically said all of humanity is garbage. They deserve to die because they don't accept people that are different. Yeah, it didn't take a genius to read between those lines. So yeah, basically he was saying let the world burn and the other one was saying no, I want to save it. And he convinced his partner to kill him in the end to save the world. So eventually they did do the right thing. It's an interesting ethical and moral dilemma like what would you do in that situation like if you've seen the spider-man movie where peter parker has to choose between his girlfriend falling to her death or saving a bus of school children and obviously it's a superhero movie so he ends up saving them both but what if he had to actually really choose and that's the sort of interesting thing this movie explored but it had so much potential but it just didn't really go there I just think I can't really say because I don't know the book the way the book was meant to end if it had a really good ending and they just changed it for the movie but they definitely needed to work on the script the ending just felt very anticlimactic nothing was explained there was no backstory given as to why this was happening, who was behind it all. We find out that the four people, the intruders in the cabin, were meant to symbolise the four, four horsemen of the apocalypse. And when I say the four horsemen of the apocalypse, I don't know if they actually meant they're that actual horsemen themselves or they're just meant to symbolise it. Because once again, the movie wasn't very clear. It didn't give any explanation. So if any of you have seen Supernatural, you know what I'm talking about when I say that that did the Four Horsemen so much better. And the whole, will you die to save the world situations. There's so many of those in Supernatural. And they hit those emotional moments so, so well. And here, there was no emotional intensity I wasn't connecting to the characters. They just felt like there wasn't really a lot of weight behind the decision, which obviously was a huge, huge decision. But yeah, I just wasn't feeling it. There was a lot of unnecessary flashbacks. Well, not a lot, but a few, which didn't add anything to the story or progress the plot at all. Like people attacking the two men in a bar for their lifestyle choices, their parents not accepting them. And it just felt like social commentary was forced in for the sake of it. And before you all come for me, look, I love Modern Family, Mitch and Cam, who also have a baby, a mixed race family. I love that show. But that doesn't try to force it. This movie did. And it also felt very anti-religion. Anyway, look, this is from M. Night Shyamalan, the man who also made Signs, which the whole movie was about a man finding his faith again. So from him, for him to go from that to make a movie that seemed to be praising religion, well, you know what I mean, not praising, but putting a positive focus on it, to making a movie like this feels disingenuous. It feels like Shyamalan was just trying to appease modern audiences, trying to, you know, be all 2023 instead of focusing on crafting a proper story. I would give this movie 6 out of 10. I was not impressed. It felt boring and repetitive. And it was a really interesting premise, but it just failed in the execution. So let me know what you think down below. If you've seen it, please comment, subscribe, all of that. Thanks, guys.